Well, hello everybody and welcome to another GTX webinar. I think you're going to like this one. This is about Neptune software. Our partner Neptune has a, a software system that helps them mobilize SAP using Fiori app development. And, uh, and uh, Martin will explain a little bit about what Fiori is, uh, but it basically is the new better look and feel uh, for SAP. So this, is a, this produces a really nice looking app uh, for mobility. And uh, I think you're going to really enjoy this. Uh, our presenters are going to be Martin Berenger. He is the CEO for Neptune Software for North America. Neptune, I think, is headquartered in uh, mostly in, in uh, Europe. But um, uh, our intro is going to be by Dean Jackson. I think everybody knows Dean. He's a senior product manager with Zebra. And I don't know why I have a Zebra. On <laughs> I saw that. I just noticed that. Did I have that there this morning? I must have. Anyway. <laughs> He's a senior project manager and a zebra like us. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Exactly. So, uh, Martin, are you ready to go? I'll, I'll make you the, the presenter. You're going to run the slides, and then uh, I guess, Dean, you're going to talk first. I want to remind you. Yeah, I'll you. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I want to remind the audience real quick to uh, type your questions into the question box uh, while we're doing the webinar so we can have them at the end. Don't want to lose them. And we'll process them when we get to the end. So, Dean and uh, uh, Martin, uh, the screen looks great. Take it away, guys. Thanks. Great. I can see it. Thank you very much, Larry. Um, morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the GTX webinar. Um, great to be here. I'd like to introduce you to Martin Berenger, who's the CEO of Neptune Software in North America. Um, just by way of introduction for Neptune, Neptune is a Zebra ISV partner. They've been an ISV partner for Zebra for many years, um, but they're also a a, uh, an SAP uh, ISV partner as well to build in out um, applications for SAP using the Neptune platform. And the applications that they offer to the market are really across um, uh, industry verticals, but it's specifically for the SAP market space. And by doing so, um, these applications are mobile apps, right? And, and, and so by making these, this, this offering to the marketplace, it drives demand for Zebra's product offering, right, or mobile computers um, as well. So Neptune completed um, Zebra validation in 2015 on our Android devices. Um, and uh, that's done in our Global Solution Center, which is a part of my team that actually uh, does the uh, validation. So go to the next slide, uh, please, Martin. I want to talk a little bit about the Global Solution Center and market readiness um, because we, you know, we leverage um, our partners and we also leverage our ISVs that support our global partners as well um, in the way of co-innovation, uh, joint development, um, design build, uh, solutions jumpstart, which you guys know about, um, testing and compatibility and validation. And we do all this technical work. Um, and what we're doing in 2016 is really being intentional about the work that we're doing uh, in terms of um, outreach, trying to uh, promote them both internally as well as externally uh, to a broader audience to tell you guys, the sellers, what's out there and what you can use, what, what solutions you can evangelize um, within your business and when you're building out your portfolio and making offering um, to your end customers, what those solutions are that you can pull from um, to leverage um, uh, software to position more hardware business. Right, so today we're gonna focus on Neptune. We're gonna focus on Neptune as it relates to uh, SAP. Um, so if you go to the next slide, Martin. Um, what we're doing is, is, because Neptune completed validation, Right. Uh, there are three things we'd like you to to um, to look at while Martin will walk you through the presentation is awareness. Right. To show you that um, this solution is is available. It's out there. Interest and consideration. So when you go into uh, an account, um, consider Neptune as an offering um, that you can lead with uh, in terms of leading with software uh, to pull in more hardware. Now I'd like to introduce you to Martin and have. Martin, take the rein and, and walk you through a tour of the company, Neptune, and then the overall Neptune solution. Uh, go ahead, Martin. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction, Dean, and thank you for having me. It's a privilege to be here and uh, show off our solution. 
Now let's have a little bit of an introduction about Neptune software itself and what the Neptune UX platform does. Because on the front end, we are providing nothing, nothing other than SAP Fiori. And for those of you who are not that familiar with SAP, SAP Fiori is the de facto future user experience or user interface for SAP. So as current uh, SAP customers are migrating to the latest uh, systems, as in HANA, which is a database, or S4 HANA, which is the future release of SAP, SAP Fiori will be what they will be dealing with. So that is very critical. Now we provide that, however, on the back end we do things a little bit differently because we power everything uh, by ABAP, which is the source code of SAP. And SAP has chosen to go down a little bit of a different road, and we'll go into that in, in more detail. Now the reason I feel it's uh, very important for us to do this together here today is because there is a really specific value proposition on pairing our software with your devices because Zebra has absolutely cutting edge devices. Uh, for example, the TC8000 that just came out, you are advertising that they can regain one hour a day out of an eight hour workday in efficiency per worker. And that is a huge improvement now with Neptune software and our capabilities for be it uh, warehouse management solutions, uh, mobile in-store management, retail execution, or plant maintenance, our claim is that we can improve efficiency by 50 to 75 percent. So pair that together with your devices and you have a very powerful ROI for people to get this done, which we can both uh, profit from that as in you can get the old uh, Windows CE devices out of there and get the new Android devices in and we can pair our software with that. So that is really a best case scenario. Let's go through some housekeeping items and as A, we are an SAP Silver partner and our complete platform is certified by SAP. So that just means that whatever we do, if we install our software on SAP's back end, we're not going to break anything. So people just like to see those stamps of approval. Now we are also, uh, we have grown significantly over the last few years. So we now have uh, in excess of 150 customers and are quickly approaching a million licensed end users. And uh, that, is a, that is a big line in the sand once you start approaching that because Really, we have no unhappy customers. Out of the 150 that are out there, we have no examples of where somebody said this does not work, or we want our money back. So we have our presence globally in 29 countries, either by uh, channel partners or by physical presence uh, with offices. So we started in Europe and then expanded uh, into China and the US uh, last year. So I'm located in Florida. For me, it's evening. For you guys, it's morning. It's become a small world. So SAP Fiori powered by Neptune UX platform. What does that exactly mean? So as you can see, this is what SAP Fiori looks like. You know, it's the tiles and the green backdrop. And this is what SAP will look like for the majority of SAP customers in the next five to 10 years. Of course, there's a lot of advantages that come with this user experience in form of you know, reduction of training, improved uh, efficiency, faster transactions, and many others that we'll go into further. So there is value to upgrading into this new UX immediately. However, if you have an outdated system, SAP cannot allow you to do that because they require you to be on the latest enhancement packs and in order to utilize the majority of their applications, you have to run a HANA database. Uh, with Neptune software, we have made that backwards compatible all the way down to uh, R3 4.7, which is a pretty old release of SAP. As long as it sits on a NetWeaver 7 point something, we're good to go. And as they upgrade to the latest releases, to HANA and an S4 HANA, they can take everything that they have done with them. So that is very important. Now if we do nothing other than providing SAP Fiori, then why is it that we have a business because exactly what SAP does? 
and we very often get the question, why uh, would we want to pay for Neptune software licenses if SAP Fiori is licensed for free by SAP? And the reason we can make a value there is because we enable ABAP developers. So ABAP developers are the folks who have coded the back end of SAP for decades. And SAP is a highly, highly complex uh, platform. And it takes people who understand the integration points and the customizations in order to be able to really customize and extend programs. And it makes sense to enable these guys to be able to build Fiori applications. Uh, with SAP's architecture, the way they have gone about things, uh, ABAP developers are not able to single-handedly create these Fiori apps. You now need uh, OData guys. You need to have front-end web developers because all of a sudden you're throwing JavaScript, the CSS, and HTML5 into the mix. And uh, ABAPers do not know those languages. And guess what? Uh, front-end web developers that you hire, they don't know SAP. So you have a few choices. You can either train ABAP developers in front-end web development, which will take a little while, or you can train front-end web developers in SAP, which will take even longer, or you can use Neptune software to build your Fiori apps, and you can do it right away and after three days of training. So it's a pretty big case right there. So using your existing talent is worth a lot of money. Uh, being able to use your existing hardware, software, middleware, and not having to upgrade is uh, so much money that you could almost instantly pay back the licenses right there. Uh, gateway servers are not cheap to install, and uh, finding OData resources is not always easy either. On top of that, Neptune software is a low-code environment, a low-code IDE which means that the way we develop these Fiori applications is by dragging and dropping uh, HTML5 or UI5 elements from one place to another, binding them to the back end that's already been there for many years, and uh, there you go. That's it. So you have the choice between that or hand coding it thousands of lines of code. So let's imagine someone writes a moderately complex application with about seven to 10,000 lines of code. Um, now this person leaves the company, a new guy comes in. He has to read through this code, which may or may not be properly commented and make sense out of it in order to fix it, debug it, customize or extend it. In the case of Neptune, he can just look at a tree and say, okay, this makes sense. And so it's cheaper to maintain, knowledge transfer is easier, uh, there's tons of value there. So let's look at the ROI bullet points uh, one by one. I'm not going to go into all of them because some of them are a bit technical, but um, the ones that are important, which is A, we can implement Fiori in days. So if one of your SAP customers would like to do uh, MIN or retail execution or warehouse management proof of concept, we're not talking months here, we're talking literally weeks. We can Im install the entire Neptune platform in a matter of 15 minutes. We can download and install warehouse management apps within a matter of minutes. It might take a few days to debug them depending on how customized their back end is. Or they might work out of the box. And then you just have to figure out a way to deliver those apps to the internet if you want to get them outside of the firewall or the VPN. Or you can just be on a network. Either way, this can be done in one week or two weeks. You can have a, a goods receipt app or a stock overview or something to show them, hey, this works on our devices. Look how fast it is. And there's a sale. Our overall reduction in total cost of ownership over the payback period is 63%. And that is worth a lot of money. I mean, anywhere from instantaneous to 12 to 18 months is how you can pay back our licenses. Either one is acceptable. We've talked about backwards compatibility. Uh, we haven't talked about offline capability that much. That is a really big strength of ours and a really big uh, pain point for SAP. And that is uh, 
with us, offline is out of the box. And we've gotten so used to being connected to the internet at any given time that people take for granted that we have that connectivity. But now the important thing is being able to figure out robust software that can handle being disconnected for a short period of time or for a long period of time because port trucks tend to travel through warehouses that might have bad Wi-Fi coverage and if you're stuck on an outdated ITS mobile system uh, with browser driven transactions all of a sudden this guy is now starting to have a pretty bad day and if you have a Neptune software warehouse management app it doesn't matter if it goes offline it'll realize you're now offline you can still transact upon your system and when you go back online it will sync it or you can have full offline solutions where you just go to work in the morning you sync with the back end and after you're done syncing with the back end you just uh, disconnect from the system and uh, go about doing your business and sync back when you're done so there's a lot of different ways that can be done. This comes in really handy when you're out in the field, making, let's say, broken comm towers somewhere in the middle of nowhere without internet. You sort of have to have offline capability in a situation like that. We also talked about future-proof, low-code, drag-and-drop environment. Um, the rest of these are really more technical. We do have tons of template apps of about 92, 93 now actually that cover the entire business suite that we give away for free with our licenses. So we do not charge separately for our applications. Here's just a visual of the TCO comparison. So you can see how SAP Fiori by itself versus SAP Fiori powered by Neptune does as far as cost goes. And now let's swing into the warehouse management portion of this. And I do know that we are looking at ketchup bottles here. And you might believe it or not, there's actually a halfway decent reason for that. Because I was pretty confused a few months ago as to uh, what is UX and what is UI. UI has been around for many, many years. Everybody knows it stands for user interface. But that's no longer the big word. Um, user experience now is the important thing. Uh, if you look at both of these bottles, they both look pretty, but one has a much nicer user experience than the other. So nowadays it's all about designing the user experience when it comes to software. And this revolution started with Google and Apple uh, in the early 2000s. All of a sudden when Google came out with a pretty much just white blank screen with a button, a field, and a logo on it, compared to Yahoo's uh, everything in a kitchen sink on a website. And then, of course, Apple came in with their intuitive touch devices. And now you have consumers that are getting used to having smooth, intuitive user experience. And guess what? When they come to work, they expect that. And they are not getting it because they're looking at screens like this. And there's actually research out there that shows that retention for employees is worse with software that is clunky like that. So we need to fix it and that is why SAP has come out with UI5 which is on the right side here and you can see how far we've come from the R2 days where it was console and every transition since then. So maybe in 20 years we'll laugh at this, who knows, but for right now this is delightful, it's intuitive, and there is very minimal if no training required, and that's how it should be. When you have to train people on an application nowadays, you say that the developer has not done a good enough job. So what do end users need? What do they want? Uh, they would like to go from this to this and this, because this is browser-based, um, it's online only, We've talked about losing connectivity, and there are many examples out there for when you might lose online connectivity, be it uh, thunderstorms, lightning strikes somewhere, and all of a sudden you got uh, production lines backing up now because you can't do putaways or you can't get materials to the line because your SAP system is down. Guess what? With these devices, with offline capability, you can keep on rolling. Same thing goes for the GUI inside of SAP. These are 
is way too busy looking and believe it or not this is actually a very simple SAP screen they have screens out there that have thousands of fields in it and you don't know which ones you actually have to fill out this is what the future holds right here it's simple clean looking interface drop down menus you'll auto populate as much as you can and go from there now why is it that we need this or want this and it's not just about having something that looks pretty or having a pretty wrapper. There's hard value, hard cash in having a user experience like that. And it's not just about pretty screens. Uh, let's say the uh, devices that you're using now that people are carrying around with themselves every day. We have a GPS, we have cameras, we have NFC readers, we have all sorts of things in our pocket that most of us don't even fathom. And uh, if you go to Cordova and search Cordova plugins, you can see what all your phone actually can do that you have never even dreamed of. But those are all things you can leverage to improve processes. So there's the example of geolocation. Geolocation can be used in an environment where you say, say a big company has 50 warehouses spread all over the country. And of course, each one of them has a location and an ID number that has to be entered in a transaction. Uh, if you use GPS, your device knows where it's at. It will automatically populate. That's already one number that can be screwed up. And that's just one example. Uh, native scanning is truly a revolution in scanning. So it used to be in the uh, old ways with ITS Mobile. When you scan, you have to tap inside a field. Then you scan. You wait for the string to kind of fill in. And when you're a bit impatient like I am, you might cut off the string because you hit post too early, so now you have bad data. With native scanning, it knows which field you're scanning into automatically because it scans the number. It reconciles it with the database and says, OK, this looks like a PO. This looks like a material or whatever. And it just knows where the number goes. So within milliseconds, you're doing something that before was taking you seconds. Uh, offline capability, uh, like I said, a momentary lapse in Wi-Fi no longer leads you to have a bad day. And many other examples. Now, what about performance? Okay, this is a really, really common misconception, and that's why I want to make sure you guys all understand this. Just because it looks pretty on the screen does not mean it has to be slow. And there are even SAP consulting companies out there that have refrained from using SAP Fiori for uh, transactional or high-speed transactional environments like warehouses or retail because they think it's too slow. But if you do it right, it is just not the case because what we do to circumvent that is we actually cache the library. So the entire UI5 library, which is pretty hefty, is cached in our uh, device. So when we refresh pages, it does not load the same thing every single time. It just loads the changes. Also, our data volume is a fraction of what SAP Fiori's regular data volume is because we use JSON-H. It's a bit technical, obviously, uh, but that's a very compressed data format. And we also use uh, gzipping on top of that. So now it's reduced even further. So our data volume is a fraction of what it was before. Uh, you guys have all heard of Cyclo, uh, which, by the way, is end of life. And many other solutions are coming end of life. So people have to figure out a way to get out of those before the uh, date hits in about three years from now. But uh, we had a customer who was on a Cyclo retail execution app which had offline capability and the initial sync was taking 30 minutes. And after we got this identical application onto Neptune software, the sync went down to 30 seconds. So these are real numbers with real customers and real people, not marketing. Uh, of course, we are uh, Zebra. Uh, validated on uh, TC5570 and 75 and uh, if I missed any devices guys then please let me know but I think we're going to be working on a TC8000 pretty soon here. So that being said let's go back into uh, a demo. So I have uh, my reflector, actually my remote view here. Can you guys see my screen? 
Yeah, it's looking yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good. So you can see this is now uh, actually the TC8000 that I'm using live, real time, and this is uh, the entire Fiori app for warehouse management. This was actually designed by a channel partner of ours called S5 Consulting. We rely heavily on our channel partners because they are out there for a reason. It's because they're experts in something. In the case of S5, they are uh, leaders in warehouse management. So they built this app and it works great. So let's start by doing a you know goods receipt and uh, see how that works. So the first thing you can see is that we get a list of purchase orders, right? And this is about a year's worth. Now, since this is an offline functional app, we need to make sure that we have synced this with the latest data that's in the system. So I'm going to synchronize this right now, and that's done. So this just pulled in. You can see right here it's set for 12 months. So this pulled in 12 months worth of purchase orders in a matter of seconds, and this is uh, thousands, okay? So from that point on, there's a few things we can do. Uh, the search functionality is kind of neat. The way it works is we can actually just search for anything text related. So let's say the search for all uh, purchase orders that have Apple in it, and here they are, right? Of course, now I can look and pick the one I want, but who does that? I mean, usually a delivery comes with a delivery document where you can now just scan the purchase order. And you have to pay attention because this, is, this, this goes quickly. So when you hear the beep, it's done. So, and we're done. So I scan the purchase order number, and it immediately Native scanning reconciled the, the, the numbers with the back end and says, all right, this is a purchase order, and here are my line items. So this is also going to go pretty quick, so pay attention. This app is set up to where every time I scan a finished product or a material, it will auto-increment and do a goods receipt. So you'll see that number, that zero underneath received, you'll see that change to whatever every time I scan. So let's do one here. And as you see, we just received one of these devices. And I'm going to do a few in a row so you can see just how fast and performant this is. So pretty snappy. Another nice thing is that say you need to associate this with uh, serial numbers. You know, in some cases in retail stores, you know, have to associate this with serial numbers. You can now scan serial numbers for every single device. And when you go back, you can see we just have received two more because we entered two more serial numbers. So this was, uh, I know this is, you know, it, it might seem not impressive because it's so fast and so seamless, but, you know, this is not supposed to be rocket science. It's supposed to be easy, and this is what this is. You just scan and it works. No training required. So let's go and do a physical inventory counting, which will be just as quick and painless. So I have my material field here, and I'm going to scan a material. And it says the product was counted. This was also pretty snappy. And you can see I have 81. And now I can simply go in here and update this count and say it's you know just add seven more and synchronize it and get back out and this is how you do a physical inventory count so pretty pretty straightforward obviously I'm not going to be able to show you all of these transactions the downside of having an IDIS based demo system is I have to have somebody create data for every single thing I do because it's not a productive environment so let's do a stock transfer order. That's uh, not always the easiest to do in the industry. So we're going to have to pick our RFQ number. And uh, this would be number one. Now keep in mind, this is something that could be pre-populated. Any one of these fields could be pre-populated based on set up user parameters. So whatever user logs in, he knows who this guy is, what warehouse he works in, and you could even auto-populate the RFQ. Or if you want to be really fancy, you could put an NFC tag 
and scan an NFC tag rather than doing this by hand. So either way, so let me scan a uh, stop transfer order. And it found it pretty much right away. Here it is. So we have our transfer order number, delivery number, the vendor, the date. And all we have to do is confirm this. And it'll just run, you know. So I'm in Florida. This is in Norway. And uh, it took just a few seconds to do this. So it's confirmed. So pretty straightforward. So let me show you this because I told you this works in an offline environment. Now this is, I'm using remote view which relies on Wi-Fi and if I turn the Wi-Fi off my screen will go blank. So for one second I will show you something on my iPhone which I know you guys don't sell iPhones but uh, just to make a point <laughs> because what I can do in my iPhone I can actually go in here and say let me turn the Wi-Fi off and go to airplane mode but for right now I'm not going to do that because I want to synchronize the app first so this is the same exact app that I used on the TC8000 okay this is how we log in by the way the first time you come in you, you log in with your regular username and password just like you're used to um, but however, after that, all you have to do is this. And that is a big, big difference maker because if, just imagine if you had to put in your full username and password in your Facebook app on your phone every time you wanted to do, like something or post something, nobody would ever use it. Uh, same thing goes for user adoption in an enterprise environment. It has to be smooth, so easy login is important. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go into airplane mode now. And you can see as a little something changed, I now have a red icon on the top left that says I'm offline. And all of a sudden there are some transactions that are grayed out, but then there are several also that are still there. So the ones that are still there are fully offline capable and the other ones are not. But this could be exactly the same way. So I have my purchase orders here. And uh, you can see now how easily we integrate with camera because now I'm just going to use a camera to scan the PO number. And here it is. And I'm just going to use a camera to scan and receive a device. And same as you're used to from seeing earlier, only much slower because this is not good at doing this. You know, this is what something it would be would be good for a manager or a supervisor that doesn't do this all day just to double check something you know but there's a reason why you guys sell these devices because they work smoothly at what they do so uh, this is the Neptune client like, like I told you before we don't just do yeah, I'm showing you the wrong app here there you go we don't just do uh, one type of app, we do apps for everything. Actually, I'm going to show you this on the uh, TC8000 so you can see what it looks like because I actually installed it down here also. And it's going to go open up and it'll be, give me a choice between a demo mode and login. If you go to demo mode, you can download this app to any device um, just by going to the app store and searching for Neptune client. You can see we have the same thing that we've just demoed for warehouse management, for materials management, sales distribution, plant maintenance. We could do maintenance orders, equipment, function, location, installation, anything. So we have a fully functional SAP business suite solution here. Okay. So I think this is the end of the demo part. And... Um, Think, did we uh, go to questions earlier or did we wrap up the PowerPoint first, guys? Yeah, I think we went to questions in the middle. Okay. okay. Uh, Larry, are you getting questions in? I've got a couple questions. Uh, you, want, you want to stop and do those real quick? Yeah, let's just pause and do those. Uh, question, uh, first question is uh, actually about uh, do you use passive RFID like using the uh, RF, RFD 8500 SLED? Um, so RFID is something that uh, is I'm going to have to do more research on because I know we have done that uh, for folks out there, but I also know that RFID is not as popular as it used to be. Uh, NFC is really the new way of the world, so 
That is something we need to research on, but the thing is, anything that integrates with the back end of SAP that has SAP customization, we can leverage. That's the beauty of Neptune, because it sits right on top of the back end ABAP code. I think what I hear is, is Martin, is, I mean, I, I think that RFID is actually increasingly popular in some industries and less popular than it was in other industries, and it depends on whether your main use case is to do something like count a bunch of objects or whether you're trying to do a transaction of one object at a time, and always with RFID, you're trying to do one object at a time, singulation can be a problem. So uh, I'm thinking that it depends on what industry you're in, whether RFID is becoming more popular or less popular. But I, I do agree that NFC is becoming really important, especially in, in manufacturing and distribution uh, applications where you do need singulation of, of the items you're talking about. So. Uh, we, we probably ought to look, you know, explore, look for use cases where we might be able to use passive RFID. But right now, I'm hearing that you don't really work with passive RFID much. So, yeah, I, don't, I haven't come across it too much. So, but that is something we can do more research on for sure. Yeah. So, the next question is: Can the system work in offline mode, meaning upload data to the Android device via an Ethernet cradle and then send the worker off to work with a batch upload after a work shift? Actually, I showed you a part of that functionality, but let me give you an example of a uh, literally worst case scenario, and this is a military customer to be unnamed because they're sort of confidential, uh, is they are only allowing sync to the backend system via cable because they don't trust a Wi-Fi network or anything wireless to not be hacked. So you truly need to be able to load to your device into the local SQL database on a device, whatever you need to do your job, and then come back, cradle the uh, device, and load back up and synchronize to the back-end system. So yes, we can do that, absolutely. Okay, and the, and the other question is, is there a demo available on App Gallery? You mentioned we could go to the App Store and download this, but how about on our, our App Gallery? Uh, yes, we yeah, do have one app that's uh, validated, right? Yes, yes, that's correct. And if you just search on uh, Neptune, you'll see uh, the app available. You can download it. Cool. That's great. That's all the questions we have right now. Let's go ahead and finish the slides, and then and then we'll wrap up. Uh, you know, before you do that, I just want to. I just I can't stand it. I got to call the uh, the audience's attention to how clean and easy to use the user interface is. This is not what you're what I'm used to seeing for SAP front ends. Uh, this is, this is such a leap forward for SAP, and I think a lot of SAP customers will, will want to move to this as quickly as they can. So that's one reason it's important to know about this now. Right. That's perfect. Thanks, Barry. Uh, thanks, Martin. And, and this is where the industry is going. Um, as you look at you know, the migration from Windows Mobile, Windows Embedded to uh, to Android, right? So we know that um, Cyclo will be end of life, right? Cyclo runs on a lot of the older devices. Um, we know that ICS Mobile is green screen, um, running with uh, SAP WM and EWM. Um, so you know these are some of the things that we know, including you know Microsoft end of life and um, you know their their own uh, OS as well too. So the industry is moving to this richer. Um, user experience versus AUI, um, native scanning, power scanning, um, eliminating scan and verify, right? Um, so as you go through, um, you know, the, your your prospecting and your demos and you're showing customers um, mobility solutions for SAP, um, please feel free to go ahead and download the um, the client on your Zebra Android device. And, and play with it and show um, show how it works and, and just you know um, get familiar with um, the intricate scanning capabilities of um, of the whole solution and we would be happy to to assist you in terms of demos um, if you have customers or prospects that you need to showcase this to um, you know we can actually uh, help you with that that as well um, there is a, uh, a Neptune um, partner spotlight 
uh, white paper that's out there. I'll, I'll pass that to Larry and he can forward that to, um, to the team. The white paper talks about uh, Neptune overall as a company, um, the solution that was validated uh, in the uh, Zebra Solution Center, um, what products are supported um, in the Neptune app, and then where there is a link in the PDF that actually links directly to the, to, to the app on the Zebra app gallery. Um, on the right of your screen, right under this uh, call to action, um, you can click through here too and it will take you directly to the browser UI um, that will, and, and uh, what, well, Martin, why don't you show them the browser UI um, and, and where the, the, the solution is uh, on their internet, because they can actually do that today, right? Just go directly there and actually show, um, uh, start playing with the solution. Yeah, absolutely, and I uh, did not go into that. Yeah, we have a little time, so. Yeah, we're doing yeah. fine. We're doing fine for time. Yeah. You can just, yeah, I think you can just click on that because it's a uh, link. Do you see my phone again? Yep. Yeah. Right. Good. So there's a couple of ways you can get this app. One is you go to the App Store and search for... Neptune client. And I already have it, but of course you don't, so you just hit download. That's number one. And then of course everybody asks, can this just be done on a browser? And here's the browser-based version. So I just have a, a favorite here set up, which is called IDES Launchpad. And here it is. And it actually looks remarkably similar to our web launch pad because it is one and the same bundle app. You know, we develop once and deploy to browser desktops and all different mobile platforms with the same push. So that makes it really easy. If I click on that, you'll see a sidebar that will allow me to look at all different apps I have available in the system so you can see very easily what all we can do. And you can do the same thing. And actually, we'll share a uh, partner kit with you guys where there is uh, PowerPoints, flyers, uh, and resources on there. So if you want to look at this, you could. Uh, you can also look at this in a desktop browser. Like I said, this is the identical application. Now, if I click on IDA's launch here, this is the same exact launch pad. And uh, only the sidebar is now permanently in place because I'm dealing with a wider screen. So, is that what you wanted to see, guys? Yes, that's great. Thank you. Um, and you, so, so now you can see, you know, the richness of the UI, um, and 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 better, you know, user experience um, um, versus the old style or the old way of um, of writing these transactions. Yeah. Correct. So uh, I'm sure questions are more questions are coming in. People are thinking of like you know the enterprise browser stuff like that, right? Are you getting any questions, Mary? Uh, I got one comment. Great demo, and then <laughs> but then the same person said I want to confirm that it is an app gallery. He's pulling it down now. So uh, <laughs> I, and, and I want to I want to point out that you know uh, when I said a minute ago that this is you know a really nice, really clean. Uh, easy to use user interface, and that is a revolution for SAP. I think everybody can see what I mean about uh, you know the quality of that. So we're getting pretty close to the end. Uh, let, let's uh, before we go into the next step, let me let me uh, poll my audience. Uh, heads up, audience! Try <laughs> time to vote. <laughs> um, just let her let her really give a, get a minute to. Uh, Tell us the impact. Uh, Martin, the reason we asked these two questions, I've got two questions. One is, this one is about impact on their job. And uh, well, we try to get information that people can actually go right out and use with their customers. And this is the question that tells us how well we do that. And uh, sometimes sometimes we, we do more long-term information. The next question just asks about how valuable it is without, uh, without relating it to a customer. Let me close this window. Anybody, uh, if you're going to get a last minute vote in, do it now. One, two, three, going to close it. Close in.
All right, let's go. This is the, just how valuable is this to know? This is not related to, to customers so much. <clears throat> this particular webinar, I think, relates very well to customer, uh, what our customers need. And uh, a lot of the information I think you gave us, some of our guys will be able to run right out and use that. So that's terrific. And getting votes coming in, well, that's pretty quick. Let's uh, close this one. I got one more. We ask technical level. Uh, these are SEs. I will we'll go ahead and tell you that uh, uh, they seldom rate anything too technical. <laughs> it's just the kind of guys they are. <laughs> so. I think I've got enough. I've got enough votes there to make that make it valid, and let's close that. So let's uh, now we can get back to screen sharing. So, okay, let's yep. pick it up and head on. Yep, I just wanted to really show you guys real quickly what we're trying to get you guys. To do and uh, we we don't expect you to go out and know everything about Neptune software, obviously. So I think the biggest value out there is for folks who are on the old CE devices on ITS mobile systems, and they can buy these devices from you, the Android ones, the really cool new ones, with our software, and pay for everything within 18 months. So how often can you do that? So this is an easy, easy sell, uh, and we'll be able to support you on it all the way through. So if you want to demo it to someone, we'll demo it with you guys and uh, help you guys close the deal. Yep. I mean, the... the uh... Right, right. Thanks, Martin. Uh, one more thing I'd like to add. Um, if you go to uh, Neptune Software um, website, I think it's neptune-software.com, there's a partner link there too um, that you can navigate to and search via country. Um, you go ahead and look and see which partners, which Zebra partners uh, are on that list. Um, there are Zebra partners that um, resell Neptune software that you can collaborate with as well. Um, so that's an opportunity um, for you to actually um, go uh, to do that research today and just um, look at you know the the number of partners that are out there that uh, you can leverage to um, uh, to go to market with with Neptune. Yep, good point. Very good point. So it looks like uh, we we don't have any more questions coming in. Uh, we've done our polling. Uh, are we are we about done? I think we are. Uh, one quick note to everybody: if you have any questions about how to engage with Neptune. Uh, you can reach out to Dean Jackson or uh, if, or to me, uh, and uh, we'll we'll get you the information you need. Oh, have one more question. Does the demo app have a barcode printing sample? Yes, it does. Yep. There you go, Mark. So <laughs> he says, "Great." Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see if anybody has any more questions. Give everybody just a minute to type them in. Going once. Not seeing any new questions. Going twice. Not seeing any new questions. Okay, going three times. <laughs> I guess we're gone for tonight. Uh, Dean and and uh, Martin, if you guys would send me whatever you want to to make available, like the slide de slide decks and tools that you want to um, uh, make available to people, I'll put them in the folder where I put the recorded webinars, so they can just when they find the webinar, they'll find the the materials there. Or if you uh, would rather send me a link to them, I can post the link there as well. But whatever you send me, I'll, I'll put up there and I can get that up tomorrow. Okay. Awesome. Sounds I, good. I can send it. Okay, good deal. Well, Martin, thank you very much. Dean, thanks. We'll see you guys. At thank the you. Thanks, everyone. Webinar. Thanks, audience. Bye-bye, yeah. everybody. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.